So long COVID is absolutely a reality. It's actually a tragic consequence of this global pandemic. Long COVID conditions include a range of health problems. It can affect the brain, the heart, the kidneys, the pancreas, you know, like literally every organ system. So it's not a small problem. It's not a trivial problem. It affects anywhere between 5 to 30 percent of the people who got COVID-19 in the first place. And if you go with a with single digit, 5 percent of people with COVID-19 will get long COVID or have gotten long COVID. That translates to millions of people in the U.S. and many, many, many more around the world. Dr. Ziad Al-Ali's research shows that some serious long COVID conditions can develop up to a year after a COVID-19 infection, even after a mild or asymptomatic infection. Al Ali is the chief of research and development at the Veterans Affairs St. Louis Healthcare System, and he's a clinical epidemiologist at Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis. Al Ali conducted extensive studies on long COVID by diving into the vast database maintained by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. For the study, researchers analyzed the de identified medical records of more than 13 million veterans. The researchers examined data of more than 113,000 unvaccinated COVID-19 patients and nearly 34,000 vaccinated patients who had experienced COVID-19 breakthrough infections. The study covered a nine-month period before boosters became available. So vaccines reduce the risk of long COVID but do not eliminate the risk of long COVID. The researchers discovered that even vaccinated people with breakthrough COVID-19 infections including mild and asymptomatic infections, can experience debilitating long COVID. Long COVID can manifest in multiple different ways, including, uh, you know, brain fog, fatigue, uh, you know, neurologic dysfunction. You know, some people have strokes, some people have heart problems, you know, arrhythmias, you know, their blood pressure drops or they have really very fa fast heart rate. You know, some people have blood clottings. In people who have been vaccinated, the features of long COVID do not differ qualitatively from the long COVID that we know about in unvaccinated individuals. So qualitatively, the features are the same. The study found that COVID-19 vaccination reduced the risk of death by 34 percent. But vaccination reduces the risk of getting long COVID by 15 percent compared to unvaccinated people. However, vaccines were shown to be most effective in preventing some worrisome long COVID problems. Lung and blood clotting disorders declined by up to 56 percent. The study does not include data involving the Omicron variants, but Al Ali says other studies show vaccines are effective against current variants. Because long COVID is a problem for vaccinated people, too, Al Ali says the overall study points to the need for more tools against the virus. And we really need to up our game and be ahead of the virus, not really behind it, chasing its tail. We really need vaccines that reduce risk of transmission. Current vaccine strategy does not do a very good job at reducing risk of transmissions. Current vaccines are designed to reduce risk of hospitalization and death and severe disease but they do not reduce transmission. Two, we need vaccines that are more durable. You know, I think the American public are, are generally sick and tired of going to the doctor and getting getting vaccine every few months, getting a booster and another booster, another booster. So when is this going to end? We need vaccines that are durable, like meaning that I get it once and set it and forget it. And maybe I'll forget about it for five years and then I get another one. Three, we need vaccines that are also targeted to reduce the risk of long COVID. And I think that that's really going to be very important. Current vaccines are really, were designed from an era when we didn't even know that long COVID existed. And, and we really, really need vaccines that sort of cover a broad spectrum of variants. So we're not really reactive to it, but really more proactive in achieving a broader population immunity.